I didn't so much love studying and studying did not so much love me. <laughs> Hello there, Coding Cutie. I've missed you, which is why I've awoken from my YouTube slumber to bring you this video. This video will be all about my journey to becoming a data scientist over five years ago and working as one since then. Funny story. <laughs> it's not that funny. I actually filmed a video on this topic over a year ago. I watched the footage and it was just like immediately no. It was so painfully boring, I decided that no amount of cheesy editing could make it watchable. Alas, this question of how I became a data scientist continues to come up, and with good reason. If you want to know what gives me the audacity to talk about data science and tech careers on the internet? Because my last attempt at filming an autobiographical piece bored me to tears, this time we're gonna add a little spice. And what better spice is there than salary info. To unlock that golden nugget of information, you're gonna have to stay tuned throughout the video because I'll be going with my educational background first and then I'll be diving into the first four data science roles I've had in my career, how I landed each one of them, and my general experiences throughout. Quick disclaimer, because we have to anytime we talk about money, salary varies tremendously depending on where you're located, where the job is located, what kind of company it is, what kind of industry that company is in, and of course the current job market. For more accurate salary disclosure, check out a website that aggregates salary details like Glassdoor, Levels.FYI, and you'll get a more realistic estimate. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Back to your scheduled programming. Starting with education. If you've seen some of my other videos, particularly on TikTok and Instagram, little plug for you there, I went to the University of Waterloo, which is located just outside of Toronto, Ontario. I graduated with an honors bachelor of mathematics and a minor in computer science. No, I did not major in data science. I hadn't even heard of the term data science until the tail end of my degree. My actual major was a mouthful, math slash financial analysis and risk management. Terrible name, but I actually really enjoyed the program and was really happy with my choice. In addition to your classic core math courses, I had a good mix of other courses in statistics, probability, mathematical optimization, financial modeling, and computer science. I was also lucky enough to score a year's worth of work experience, professional work experience, throughout my degree in the form of three separate four-month internships. Honestly, I'm already so bored of this. For those of you unfamiliar with the University of Waterloo, it's a co-op school, widely known for its co-op program. Most people go there because of it, and I was one of those people. However, I ended up dropping out of the co-op program after my first co-op term. That is a long story, but long story short, I couldn't handle the stress of finding a job, especially when you have no experience and nobody wants to hire you. Balancing that with a difficult course load that was a full course load, I was already kind of struggling with school, so I dropped out. But I did promise myself that I would do my very best to find my own internships outside of the co-op program at my own pace. So the result was instead of having five to six internships and graduating within five years, I had three internships and I graduated in four years. Part of me does regret dropping out of the program and depriving myself of those opportunities that would have come in my upper years when I would have had some experience under my belt and had the chance to work for really cool tech companies as an intern. But you know what, it's okay. Everything happens for a reason and it did work out for me. I can honestly say I finished my degree without being really too stressed throughout it after I made this decision. So it was definitely the right call for me at that time. Anyway, I was convinced that I was gonna, I turned off notifications on my phone, but not on my laptop. <laughs> I was convinced that I was going to get a financial modeling job of some sort after graduating, end up in banking, but lo and behold, I started learning about data science, started hearing it floating around, and realized that I happened to actually have a really good combination of courses under my belt to enter this field, especially because I was majoring in math, which is kind of the core of data science. It was leaning towards a stats-heavy math program, and I also had that computer science minor, so it was really just... I got lucky, what can I say? Not to mention the fact that data science was a direct combo of math and writing code made it really appealing to me. 
So, 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 during the second last semester of my degree, I made it a goal to find a data science internship before I graduate. So a little background, that would be my third and final internship. My first internship was interesting, um, somewhat traumatizing and completely irrelevant. It was basically in sales. My second internship was amazing though. And it was, I think the perfect bouncing block, <laughs> building block. What am I looking for here? Stepping stone. <laughs> it was the perfect stepping stone. I was working at a four person tech startup. So I got a lot of exposure to how tech work and I was in kind of a jack of all trades role because it was such a small company. So I was working on everything from sales to front end web development. So as you can see, I didn't really have too much data science relevant experience going into this job hunt. And I also did not have any projects. Yes, there was not a single model.py file or Jupyter notebook in this girl's GitHub. So I know if I, if I were going in today into the job hunt with these kind of assets or lack thereof, it would be pretty impossible to land a data science job. It would be embarrassing to even apply, honestly. You gotta have some projects at least. But this was a different time when the pool of candidates that both knew what data science was and were qualified to do it was smaller than it is today. It was also a time when the words machine learning and predictive analytics were popping out of the mouths of tech hiring managers faster than you can say TensorFlow. So because I found myself in the right place at the right time with just enough raw materials to mold me into a data scientist, I did score a data scientist intern role at a Montreal tech startup. You might be wondering, how on earth did this girl get this job without projects or work experience? Well, what I did have on my resume was a ton of academic projects. I also had a link to my GitHub with a single web app that I built and hosted on github.io. If you wanna learn more about how to get a tech internship with no experience, like I did, I have a whole video going into detail about that, so please check that out if you haven't already. For this role, I was offered a starting salary of a whole $15 an hour, yes sexiest job of the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen. It was a smallish company, about 30 people. There was only one full-time data scientist, so I got to learn alongside him, and he was a great mentor. Physics PhD, you know, the OG data scientist profile, if you know, you know. And he is the one that really guided me into learning how to data science from scratch, if you will. That's actually the name of the book that he gave me to read in my on my first day, so. In this job, I worked exclusively with Python and the standard machine learning library. So pandas, scikit-learn, numpy, matplotlib. I was using these tools to build a property price prediction model. So it was a regression model. I spent my entire four months doing that. After wrapping up the internship and returning to my final semester of university, I almost immediately started searching for a full-time job to have lined up for right when I graduate. In the last few weeks of school, I was thrilled to secure a full-time data scientist offer in the banking industry. Now, the way I found this job beautifully demonstrates the superiority of getting yourself out there and networking to find a job versus just handing out applications, especially when the way you look on paper is mediocre at best. Sorry, baby damsel, the truth hurts. The way I did this was not by writing out applications and submitting them. I did do that too, but nobody gave me the time of day. You know who did give me the time of day? People I ambushed face to face. When they were right in front of me, they had no choice but to adhere to my requests. Seriously though, I was at every single networking event organized both by my school and by my local tech community. Through this involvement that I had, I was able to stay up to date with what's going on in the tech community. And as soon as a cool opportunity that tickled my fancy came up and was brought to my attention, I would march my bum right over to LinkedIn and I would message the heck out of anybody who seemed even remotely related to this opportunity I was interested in. And I did this until someone answered. And it was through this borderline stalker behavior that I landed a full-time job offer as a data scientist at one of Canada's largest banks. I was working with a very small team of people to build data science focused innovation prototypes 
to support all different parts of the bank. Basically, a team at the bank would come to us with a problem that they had that they think could be solved with data or machine learning. We would see if we could solve it, build a prototype, spend two months doing that, and then deliver it to them. And this was usually in the form of a web app, you know, where the back end was a machine learning model of some sort. And I did this with Flask, a micro web framework in Python. And I also learned how to build visual dashboards using mostly Google Data Studio and a bit of Tableau. Now my starting annual salary for this role was 70,000 a year with fully loaded benefits, an employee share purchase plan, and a variable bonus that wasn't really like defined to me in terms of a percentage. And I didn't get a bonus the end of my first year because I joined too late in the year, but the next year I got a bonus of over 20%. After almost a year and a half in this role, I got promoted to senior data scientist, which came with a raise. Uh, bringing my salary up to $85,000. Shortly after I got my new job title, I made an internal transfer to a sister data science team at the bank where I got the chance to work on more production level modeling. This was really my first exposure to navigating data warehouses using SQL, but my work was still predominantly in, you guessed it, Python. My favorite projects in this era were building marketing models to predict customer behavior and make marketing decisions, and also automating some manual bank processes using machine learning. I stayed in this role for about a year before I got the itch to return to the tech startup scene. Now, before I get into telling you about the final role I'll be sharing today, I did want to mention that I was so lucky to gain direct management and leadership experience during my entire time that I spent at the bank from day one. And this was because I worked with co-op students. I was hiring them, reviewing resumes, interviewing them, and then not directly managing, but kind of indirectly <laughs> managing them on their day-to-day, -day, working with them on the projects, doing code reviews. I wanted to make sure I mention it in order to answer any questions that may come up about why I think I feel so qualified to talk about the data science job application and landing process. There you go. Anyway, after moving on from the bank, I ended up accepting an offer to work as a data scientist at a local AI startup. And here my compensation was a $95,000 base salary with a 10% performance bonus, which obviously isn't guaranteed. Once again, great benefits. I really love the company culture and the experience of day to day of going to work on this team. My task set consisted primarily of two things. One was on the measurement side of things. So measuring the effectiveness and value, monetary value of the models that the team was building. And this was pretty cool because it was a lot of, you know, AB testing. It really tested my um, experimental design skills. So that was cool. But the other side of it was debugging issues that happened in the big data pipeline. So something would break somewhere and I would hack into the data, hack in, Pfft. who do I think I am here? I would go into the data to try to investigate what went wrong. The best part of the actual work part of this job was that I got exposure to so many other tools. I worked with AWS and I got exposure to big data for the first time. So I learned a bit of Spark as well. I moved on from this role over a year ago and I won't be disclosing too much about my current role because well, you know, every damsel needs to maintain some mystery and allure in her life and the same goes for me, so. Mystery, allure, allure, allure. But what I will say is that I am currently at a larger tech company and my work right now is very SQL and analytics heavy. I'm learning a lot and I'm really enjoying it. That's all from me, Coding Cutie. Thank you so much for tuning into this. I hope I answered all your questions that you had about my qualifications. I hope you laughed more times than you cringed. Because <laughs> I know I didn't. More questions? New video request? Leave it down below in the comments. I will catch you there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe to see more of whatever this was. Have a day delicious day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.